Welcome to the homework solution tutorial. This is going to be covering 3A. Here I'm going to be solving by factoring for number 1, 2, and number 3. If we take a look at number 1, number 1, it is already in factored form. So all we have to do is set each factor equals to 0. So 4K plus 5 is going to be equal to 0 and x plus 1 is going to be equal to 0. This is called the zero product property. We're going to subtract 5 to both sides, so we can now solve for the k. What's left on my left-hand side is a 4k is equal to negative 5. I can now divide by that 4 to get k alone. Now k is alone. k is equal to negative 5 over 4. That would be your first solution. The second solution, comes from k plus 1 equaling to 0. We subtract 1 to both sides, then you get k is equal to negative 1. The two set solutions here is k is equal to negative 5 over 4, and k is equal to 1. Those are your solutions here. Number 2, it asks us to solve by factoring. Number 2 is in standard form. We have to factor it number one was already factored so we have to factor this but first we would like it to be equaling to zero so what we're going to do is we're going to add five to both sides adding five to both sides get us x squared minus 11 x um, plus 19 20 21 to 2 23 20, 24 okay that is going to be equal to zero now it is in a good format of standard form equaling to zero. Now we can factor. This looks like a traditional um, trinomial with the x method. So I draw the x. I want to find two numbers that add to negative 11 that multiplies to 24. Well, the numbers that I'm going to pick are, I think, 3 and 8 because 3 times 8 is 24. But I have to add them, and they have to add up to... They have to add up to negative 11. Negative 3 plus negative 8 does get me negative 11. Negative 3 times negative 8 does get me 24. So my factors are x minus 3 is my first factor, and x minus 8 is my second factor. And again, I set that equal to 0 because that is what the equation is. Now, once it's in factor form, I can now set each equation equal to 0. That is called the zero product property. Now I, now I can solve. Add 3 to both sides to solve for the first equation, getting me x is equal to 3. My second equation, I have x minus 8, so I add 8 to both sides. I now get x is equal to 8. These are my two solutions. x equals to 3 is my first one, and x equals to 8 is my second one. Now just take a look at this one. Okay, first of all, we would like it to be in equal to 0, so we're going to subtract 6 to both sides. In this process, I get 6n squared minus 8n minus 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 24, equaling to 0. Okay, we could try to do this, but notice that 6, 18, and 24 has a GCF. The GCF is, I think, 6. So let's pull out a 6. Here's the GCF, leaving you with an n squared minus 3n minus 4, equaling to 0. See, now this is pretty because this is a classic trinomial that I can actually just use the x method for. Negative 3 here, negative 4 here. I want to find two numbers that when I add, it equals to negative 3, when, but when I multiply, it equals to negative 4. That should be 1 and 4, I believe, right? Okay, so let's see which Oh, negative 4 is going to be negative. So let's try. 1 plus negative 4 does get me negative 3, and 1 times negative 4 does get me um, negative 4. So these are my two factors. So it's going to be x plus 1. And my second factor is going to be x minus 4. Set that equal to 0. To find my solutions, we just set the factors equal to 0 using the zero product property. Now we can solve. 
I can sub subtract one to both sides. This gets me x is equal to negative one. And here I can add four to both sides, getting me x is equal to four. These are my two solutions, x is equal to negative one and x is equal to four.